are Americans, plain, ordinary Americans. And one out of eight of them will die of cancer. Die, unless all of us do everything in our power to fight cancer through education, research, and medical service. These cancer cells, shown here under the microscope, will kill one out of every eight, one every three minutes, in one family out of every two. Listen, listen to the warning. For you might be next. Cancer can strike anyone, anytime, in any part of the body. You must face the facts. Cancer, first of all, is a disease of the cell. And to understand cancer, you must first understand something about these cells, beginning with the single cell or ovum. Once this ovum is fertilized, it divides and subdivides, and then the subdivisions divide. Each new cell is another block in the construction of the body, and slowly the body forms. It's an orderly process, a systematic growth and development based on cell teamwork and cooperation. But within this healthy structure, other cells sometimes appear. Cells which exist for themselves alone, gangster cells, with all the characteristics of antisocial criminals. As shown in this model of a gland, the cancer cells breed wildly, ravaging the normal cells, wrecking the human body. Finally, they kill. For these cells produced by the body are the body's greatest enemy. This is cancer. But as the menace of cancer has grown, so have the means of discovering and destroying it. Today, after years of worldwide research, science is slowly working towards solution of the mystery of cancer bringing to light certain hopeful and important facts. Years of work with experimental animals have revealed some of the conditions which may lead to the development of cancer. One of these conditions is damage to cells by some outside agent. Certain chemicals, for example, when applied to the mouse's skin, will produce a form of skin cancer. Another type of damage may result in excessive exposure to sunlight or to other sources of ultraviolet rays. But cell damage alone may not always produce cancer. Animal research indicates another condition is sometimes necessary. And what is true of these experimental mice may be true of humans as well. This second necessary condition is an inherent weakness for the disease. Cancer itself is neither contagious nor inherited, but there is a possibility that a certain tendency to the disease, an inherent cell weakness perhaps, may be passed on to a child. When this inherent tendency combines with other factors, cancer may strike. Despite advances in cancer research, unless the patient gets attention in time, all that we know about cancer won't be enough to save him. But early detection, diagnosis, and treatment may mean early recovery. This begins with a careful history and physical examination. If in the course of this examination, a suspicious condition is noted in some tissue, then a piece of the tissue may be removed for study. The piece of tissue may be frozen, or as shown here, it may be embedded in paraffin. When the bit of tissue is frozen hard, or when the paraffin hardens, a machine slices it into thin sections which are stained for microscopic examination. 
The thin section of stained tissue is then studied under the microscope to determine whether or not the cells are those of cancer. In this section, the microscopic appearance is that of cancer. When the diagnosis of cancer is made, treatment must be prompt. It may proceed in three ways. One way, of course, is surgery. The cancer operation proceeds like any other. Often the cancer may be completely removed and the normal cells resume their healthy existence. Today, cancer surgeons are doing magnificent work, but even they may not always succeed unless the cancer is discovered early and treated promptly. Another method of treatment is radium, which is frequently used in skin cancer. Radium, or radium gas in tubes, as shown here, may be set into a wax form molded to fit the diseased area. This form is then applied to the area of the cancer. When the wild and aggressive cancer cells are struck by the radium rays, they become subdued, lifeless, and finally they disintegrate. This may be the only treatment necessary, and the patient may be completely recovered in a matter of weeks. X-ray is the third method of treatment and may be used for both internal and external cancers. The doctor determines the size and position of the cancerous area to be treated. The normal tissues of the patient are then protected from the X-ray field with leaded rubber plates. The X-ray may then destroy the cancer cells while healthy tissues are less affected. In certain cases, a cancer may be attacked from two or more different angles so as to increase the ray's effectiveness. Surgery, radium, x-ray. These are the proven cures, the only trustworthy cures. Remember that. Because the fight against cancer is also the fight against quackery against the quick cure artists who snare thousands of victims each year. Whether he specializes in phony machines or fake medicines, the cancer quack is skilled in extorting money from his frightened and helpless patients. But the greatest crime he commits is delay. Delay in effecting a real cure. And too often the victim is left to face only tragedy and the outstretched hand. The facts and figures in this table tell you why time is so important in treating cancer. They tell you your chance for recovery when cancer is discovered and treated early. It's a chance which rapidly disappears as treatment is delayed. Compare the percentage of cures in both columns and you'll know why it is so important to learn the cancer danger signal and go to your doctor as soon as you notice anything suspicious. Today, medical students the world over are learning the signs and symptoms of cancer through their medical training. There are many of these signs, but the seven most common of them we call cancer danger signals. And here on the health front of America, it is your duty to familiarize yourself with these common danger signals. You must learn, for instance, that sores that don't heal, especially about the mouth or lips, may mean cancer or that a painless lump or hardening in the breast or on the lip or tongue may mean cancer. 
Unusual bleeding in any of the natural body openings may be due to cancer. Any change in the color or size of a wart or mole may mean cancer. Persistent hoarseness, unexplained cough or difficulty in swallowing may mean cancer. Any change in normal bowel habits may mean cancer. Today, statistics show that the cancer death toll is increasing year by year. From Pearl Harbor to VJ Day, cancer killed twice as many Americans as were lost in the war. One out of every eight deaths. One every three minutes. Every year, cancer mounts a more deadly attack against the nation's health. But every year, too, medical science finds new weapons and fights back. You must join that fight. You must learn the cancer danger signals and report all suspected symptoms to a doctor immediately. You must tell your family and your friends the facts about cancer and the need for early treatment. You must help in our fight against cancer through research, education, and service. Yes, you must fight back. You must join the battle against cancer.